What is atrial fibrillation, first and foremost? Atrial fibrillation is a rhythm problem that takes place in the top chamber of the heart. Our heart has four chambers. The top chamber we call the atria, and the bottom chambers are the ventricle. Under normal conditions, the top chamber contracts in a very organized fashion, followed by the lower chamber. That's not what happens when you have AFib. When you have AFib, the top chamber starts simply quivering very fast in a disorganized manner, and that has implications. So what can AFib do? AFib can cause many symptoms, and we'll talk about them, but it can also increase your risk of stroke and even congestive heart failure. So if you have atrial fibrillation, you should seek medical attention. And sometimes it's important to see a specialist, what we call an electrophysiologist, someone that takes care of heart rhythm problems. Most patients have risk factors that will lead you to have atrial fibrillation. In the United States, the most common risk factors will be obesity, simply being overweight, also obstructive sleep apnea, high blood pressure, and simply aging. The older you are, the more likely you are to have atrial fibrillation. Some of those risk factors are modifiable. You could develop a more a healthier lifestyle, quit smoking, decrease alcohol intake, lose weight and exercise. Those have been proven to decrease the incidence of new onset atrial fibrillation. So that's the most important thing. Whatever you choose to do, whatever your treatment path is going to be, Lifestyle modification and addressing these risk factors is first and foremost what you need to be doing. So once you have addressed these risk factors and you start talking to an electrophysiologist or a cardiologist about how to treat your atrial fibrillation, you have to understand that the more important thing you need to do is talk about stroke prevention. That's the most important thing. A stroke for in a patient with atrial fibrillation, there's an increased risk about at least five times of developing a stroke, and in some patients with multiple risk factors, even higher. There are several treatment options to reduce the risk of stroke, and you should talk to your doctor. If you have symptomatic atrial fibrillation, there's also several treatment options today. We have drug therapy, so medications that can be used to decrease the number of episodes of atrial fibrillation, and also procedures such as what we call catheter ablation for atrial fibrillation. So if you have been diagnosed with AFib or if you think you may have atrial fibrillation, what are the symptoms that you may have? Atrial fibrillation can commonly cause palpitations, feelings of fast heartbeat or fluttering in the chest. In some patients, the heart can get so fast that you may get dizzy, short of breath, or even just have continuous fatigue. In a lot of patients, that would be some of the presentations. Atrial fibrillation ablation, of what we also call catheter ablation for atrial fibrillation, has been shown in many clinical trials or research studies to be superior to drug therapy for treatment of atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation ablation is typically performed in specialized centers in hospitals, and it should be performed in hospitals that have a lot of experience with it, with high volumes, so that it can be done safely. And most patients will spend one night in the hospital, and within a week are back to their normal activities. Catheter ablation for atrial fibrillation typically would take between two or three hours uh, to uh, be performed and the complication rates now in the United States in highly specialized centers and centers with high volume are very, very low. The success rates that has been shown in clinical trials and also in many centers with a good experience in atrial fibrillation ablation has been as high as 85 to 90 percent. And that has been confirmed in many clinical trials and registries and databases and hospitals that perform this routinely. Once atrial fibrillation ablation is performed, what you can expect is an improvement in your quality of life and also to be able to stop some of the antiarrhythmic drugs we have used or have been used because they have side effects and some of the side effects being fatigue. So being off those drugs and also being free of atrial fibrillation will improve your quality of life. If you, however, have a high risk of stroke, 
we may continue, we may indicate that you continue treatment with oral anticoagulations to decrease your risk of stroke. So to summarize, first, you can decrease your chances of developing atrial fibrillation by addressing the risk factors, the known risk factors, which would be obesity, being a smoker, drinking, and having obstructive sleep apnea, for example, or diabetes. So addressing these will decrease your chances of developing AFib in the future. If you already have atrial fibrillation, fortunately we have many treatment options today. We have blood thinners to decrease the risk of stroke. And now, to try to get patients to be free of atrial fibrillation, we have procedures and drugs. Catheter ablation for atrial fibrillation has been shown to be safe and very effective, especially when done in specialized high volume centers. Most patients can return to their activities quickly and we can improve their quality of life significantly. So if you have atrial fibrillation, it is important for you to see a specialist, someone that can help you walk through these uh, next steps so that you can improve your quality of life and decrease your chances of having a complication such as a stroke.